This program is funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television license fee. A lot of people are just living at home and looking looking around their homes more and thinking how could I improve, you know, my surroundings. So from that point of view, from from a kind of quality of life point of view, to be surrounded by by beautiful artwork, it's something that appeals to people um, more now that they have been forced to spend more time in their in their living space. Hello, I'm Maria Staunton, and I'm Mary Costello, and this is Making It, the show that reveals the true stories of Mayo's women in business, from top executives to artists, to female founders, to those providing essential services in our local towns. Stay with us for the next 20 minutes, and who knows, you might hear the advice or inspiration you need to get your own dream off the ground. Hello, I'm Mary Costello, and welcome to Making It. My guest this week is Rosemary Noon, who owns the Clermoris Gallery on Mount Street. Rosemary was born and reared in Clermoris, so of course I began by asking if she'd tell me about her upbringing. Sure, um, yeah, my father is John Noon and my mother is Patricia Noon and we grew up in the town. Um, originally I have uh, three siblings, a brother and two sisters, so we lived in the bank house. I grew up there at the bottom of the town on the Ballandine corner. And um, yeah, had a lovely, had a lovely upbringing there, went to the local school and um, then we later moved out the country, just a a couple of kilometers out to an old house that uh, my parents took on and renovated. And uh, that was a big part of our uh, childhood, I suppose, being involved in the in the transformation of the house and um, moving out to the country and kind of getting interested in wildlife and woods and exploring around there and uh, we weren't the little townies that we had been. (laughs) Okay so tell us Rosemary what do you do? Well I do two things professionally. I work in the Hunt Museum in Limerick as the business uh, development manager there and I run Claire Morris Gallery which I opened um, in 2007. And that's a commercial gallery that sells contemporary Irish art. Artists at every stage of their artistic development. So I would show young artists just straight out of college to um, very established or some of them have passed away. Artists like um, Tony O'Malley or Huey O'Donoghue or um, Donald Teskey and artists who are who are very well known. Um, and... Yeah, and then the whole the whole range of artists that will be considered mid career, um, and so it's the it's the full range really. And uh, I believe that was in your father's. Uh, your father was a vet. Am I correct in saying that? And this is in his premises, formerly yeah, the that, veterinary surgery. That's right. That's right. the The building was actually. Um, my father's grandmother so it's been in the family for a long time and he had an office there his veterinary uh, surgery for many years and when he retired it was left vacant and um, I was happy to take it off his hands and uh, turn it into a gallery so that was in 2007 I had been living abroad and I, I moved home at that stage then to to start the business. And can I just ask you, was where did where did it come from? Art, like, was art to be your journey? What was your aspirations? Would say in leaving cert, um, did you did you know exactly what you wanted to do? I oh, no, I still don't know what I want to do. Um, I was exposed to art since I was a very young child, and it was always a big part of the background of of my childhood. Uh, the Clemaris Open Exhibition was um, in its heyday when I was when I was a toddler and my mother was involved in it at that stage and so I have very vivid memories of seeing contemporary art and meeting artists and just the excitement of unwrapping the paintings up in the college in um, 
in the in the boys school and uh seeing the works going up in the walls and it was just such an exciting thing to to witness i think in a a small town where where not a whole lot happens a lot of the time so then after that uh, i mean my mother was very interested in art and uh, very involved in organizing um art exhibitions and later festivals with the george moore society and she brought um art therapy into her practice as a psychiatrist and introduced it into the um into the health service and hired um a professional artist to work with um clients in the in the day centers and so it was just involved i was just exposed to art and artists in so many different ways and would visit studios and um you know then every year there was a george moore festival from 1989 for about i don't know how many years there was an annual summer um george moore festival where just writers and artists and all sorts of creatives um would descend on clamaris and we get to listen to them perform or watch them perform listen to music um see great exhibitions and it was just always the most exciting part of of life but rosemary didn't go into the art world straight from school after a course in performance at liberty's college in dublin she went to study English literature at the University of Ulster with a year abroad that took her to Canada. And it was from there that she went to Chicago's School of the Art Institute where she gained a Master's in Art Administration. After that, work followed at San Francisco's Museum of Modern Art and then in New York at an organisation promoting Irish art in America. Returning to Ireland, where did the idea come from to open a gallery of her own? I suppose I'd always been organising exhibitions and it was part of my master's degree. I had, you know, I'd organised exhibitions. I had brought, I'd toured shows over from Ireland, actually, in Chicago when I was there. And I mean, it was just always uh, kind of second nature to me to get involved. Um, it just seemed like the logical next step at the time. I was very, in, you know um immersed in in the art world having just come from art school i had a lot of um connections who were artists and um i just really wanted the challenge of of trying to create a you know a, a strong program for a gallery and um working with people i've i've always you know that i found really interesting to work with and pulling together ideas for shows and um you know i it, there was a, so much creative freedom involved in running your own your own business and showing who you want to show working with who you want to work with and um you know collaborating with with people that you um that you really want to work with it, it was just there was a lot of um it just really appealed to me as as a career path and also at the time the art market was really on fire and you know it was it was kind of crazy what was what was going on at the time so in terms of sales um, sales were so paintings were so expensive and just flying off the walls um, and um, certain artists um, were just selling for such a lot of money at auction and it was a good time for sales so I mean um, that helped too uh, the the first few exhibitions were were very successful commercially um you know sold out most of most of the initial exhibitions and uh, some of this work was you know some of the paintings were between 10 20 even 25000 and they were selling in Clemaris um you know the night i opened i think maybe 60,000 euros worth of art was sold so that'll give you an idea wow. of yeah. of the climate at the time um and then obviously after that there was a huge recession that we all know about and um 
it was a different ball game. You'd have show after show where nothing sold at all. Or were you um, many years in the business before the crash hit, Rosemary? No, <laughs> no, I uh, I was there for the kind of just the tail end of it, the tail end of the boom, really. Um, I probably had about four exhibitions before things started to noticeably decline. I mean, I opened in August 2007 and I'd say by, you know, September 2008, that seems to have been a um, a time when when things were were noticeably um uh, deteriorating. And how are things in the art gallery? Uh, has th- you know, I'm sure things have picked up since that. And businesses. Yeah, well, in 2014, I would say things started to pick up for me. Um, most of my business is, is done, you know, privately um, through people. I guess I've met over the years who would buy every year and um you know collectors that you would make contact with some of them haven't been to my gallery or um and they will buy without without seeing the work in the flesh because they might be familiar with the artists and familiar with their work so i would have you know a pool of collectors who would um keep me in business basically and then outside of that you have exhibitions and um and that they, they will be they would be also sales, but um, to more local people or sometimes people travel to, to see them. There's always been a, a spectrum of clients. So there may be um, a, there's a core group of collectors who are just art lovers and have been buying from me through the recession and through the good times and, you know, currently. And they come from different different walks of life and some of them are just passionate about art and can't help themselves they just collect voraciously and they, they'll always be like that then others are you know they might buy a new house and want to fill it with art and then they'll never buy again um and then others are very flippant you know that they, they tell you they'll buy a painting and then they'll they you know it won't go through or they'll let you down or you know there's 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 different um different relationships with 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 that core group um but then outside of that i would have buyers who are of normal means and would have jobs but um don't have a budget for art very few people have a budget to buy art um so they would buy work over time and um set up a payment plan with me so they may buy a piece for a thousand euros and pay it over six months um, in monthly repayments. It's not something that everybody offers, but I wouldn't be in business if I hadn't. Um, and I, it works for me because it, 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 you can manage cash flow and, and it works for artists as well to know that they will have a payment coming in at a certain day each month and that they can, they can plan for that as well. Um, so, so yeah, I mean they're they're yeah. It's really it's an it's an advantage that you have over other galleries as well because not everyone will offer it, and it's an advantage that you would have over auction houses, for example, where you have to pay up front. So um, so it's been very important for me. You would always have that um, sort of balance of of lower price sales to. A greater number of of buyers with then your kind of core core group of of people who buy in a in a much higher price range um but the the past year obviously nothing has been happening so i'm kind of adapting to that um to that at the moment and building a new website and uh planning to do uh, virtual exhibitions um and events which is a it's a positive development because it um it, it's something I can I can continue to do in tandem with physical exhibitions when they ever when they ever come on stream again, um, which I'm hoping will be the end of this year, September this year. That new website is clermorisgallery.ie and it includes an online store where customers can browse and buy art, along with the virtual exhibitions 
Selling online is another new departure for Claire Morris Gallery. We're in Claire Morris Gallery. Today we are in conversation with Peter Burns. When you started in your career and you showed here 10 years ago, um, your work was much more allegorical and the references to mythology. I think you have to adapt to survive. Um, I think that it's very hard to 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 appreciate art when you're looking at these small JPEGs on a, on a screen. I mean, I really miss seeing real art and seeing good art and walking into a, a, a gallery and having that sort of uh, visceral experience of art. I think there's no, no replacement for it. I just think, um, but we have to do the best we can. And, um, and a website is the next best thing. So, um, I, I I do think that people. I mean, I've been looking at exhibitions online for the last year, and I'm I'm just a bit jaded <laughs> by them. Um, but uh, and I th- I do think a lot of people feel that way. But at the same time, um, people have been buying more art in the last year than they have been in the previous four or five years. So um, business is is good. And what do you think the reason for that is, Rosemary, that people would be buying more art now because we're thinking maybe is there less money around? But obviously not. I suppose people are spending less money in one sense. I think it depends where you're coming from. I think a lot of um, a lot of people are just living at home and looking looking around their homes more and thinking, how could I improve, you know, my surroundings and um prioritizing that a bit more i would say probably so from that point of view from from a kind of quality of life point of view to be surrounded by by beautiful artwork it's something that appeals to people um more now that they have been forced to spend more time in their in their living space and then there's people at a different level, I guess, who who are put who are investing in art because they can see that you know it's costing them money to keep to keep their money in a bank, and they can see certain artists really in, you know increasing in value, and they 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 come at it from a more um, uh, investment point of view. Um, so, but I would say there's just. I'd say it's mostly to do with people wanting to to live with art and being interested in art in a way that they they didn't maybe take the time to to be interested in art before. Do you think, uh, Rosemary, that you know, for um, women setting up a business, do you think it's more difficult for women going down that route of setting up their own business? No. No. <laughs> I don't. I mean, lots of we're, we're surrounded by very successful uh, women, female entrepreneurs. I mean, I think it's probably harder to, um, you know, to break the glass ceiling in in the corporate world in certain sectors and legal and banking and finance and that kind of thing. But as far as your own startup, there's nothing stopping you, you know. I can only speak from experience in the art world. I mean, at the level, I've never experienced any disadvantage. It is dominated by men. I mean, you know, if you go to an art fair, like probably 80% of the, of the, of the galleries will be, will be run and owned by men. Um, But it can be an advantage um, as much as a disadvantage. Um, I don't, I mean, I definitely think there are equality issues in the workplace and in uh, in industries. But I just in the at the level I operate at, you know, as a startup, um, you know, a gallery in a small town that tries to reach a, a big audience, it hasn't. It has. It's never occurred to me that it's an issue. I think it's an issue for for artists. I think we, uh, female artists don't um, don't have as easy a, a ride as as male artists actually, um, and I think that their work will never appreciate um, the same as as um, as work by male artists, and you see that play out um, in the auction houses and that. So that that's definitely 
it's definitely noticeable there. But, and can you uh, talk to us about what gives you a buzz about your work? You know, describe, we'll say, the kind of moments that are the big rewards. Um, well, I really love when an exhibition comes together well and you can just, you know, stand back and think, just stand back and enjoy it. What I'd most enjoy would be when I come across like young artists I wouldn't have um, seen before who wouldn't have exhibited and would be just under the radar and um, just to meet them at that stage of their career and 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 exhibit their work it's really exciting then to follow their careers and see them do well and um, just feel like you're a part of of the beginning of that journey um, I get a good I get a good um, kick out of that and also sales it's great to <laughs> it's always great to to make sales for artists and um, you know I find that rewarding been listening to Making It. A very big thanks to my guest this week, Rosemary Noon of Clermorris Gallery. If you'd like to get in touch with comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Making It Mayo. Or you can email makingitmayo at gmail.com. This show was recorded remotely for Clermorris Community Radio. For more information, visit ccr946.ie. I'm Mary Costello. Until next time, thanks for listening. This programme is funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.